the, the impact on businesses is a really uh, important and inter interesting question. There's lots to say there. Uh, let me focus on a survey that uh, my colleagues and I did uh, earlier this month uh, designed to elicit information on exactly that question. So there's a survey of business uncertainty, as we style it, that is fielded by the Federal Reserve Bank of Atlanta. It's uh, co-branded with the University of Chicago Booth School of Business in Stanford, because I'm one of the co-creators, and so is Nick Bloom at Stanford. And the unique characteristic of this survey instrument is designed to elicit information, forward-looking information, about what businesses see. So in March, uh, over a two-week period around the beginning of the month, we explicitly asked um, several hundred businesses, what do you anticipate will be the impact of coronavirus-related developments on your sales revenue in 2020? And the, acti the kind of activity-weighted average answer that came back was about minus 6%. So that's, that's a pretty big negative hit. But perhaps even more interestingly, from the first to the second week of the survey, and the first week was the week of March 9th, and the second week was you know, the week of March uh, um, 16th, the answers got a lot worse. And so the answers in the second week were almost twice as bad as in the first week, so more like uh, close to a 12% negative sales hit. So businesses themselves, they see a, a, a very bad hit to their sales revenue, to their operations uh, in 2020. And uh, over the course of the time the survey was in the field, those expectations deteriorated quite a bit. Um, so even 6% is a really major sharp recession. 12% um, is unlike anything we've seen uh, in modern times uh, in terms of a contraction for, you know, for a span of less than a single year. So that's pretty bad. Now, of course, nobody really knows. Um, developments are changing day by day. We don't yet know how long the um, pandemic will continue to uh, accelerate. We really don't know at this point um, just how infectious the virus is um, and how lethal it is because we don't really have um, good information on how many people have already had the disease and recovered it from it. And so, so we're, we're still very much in the dark uh, in, in terms of just on the medical side, and that makes it very hard to assess the uh, ultimate economic consequences. So the crisis is going to have some profound effects on the labor market, and you can already see some early waves uh, of what that is. There's been a massive uptick in the demand for delivery services, home delivery services, business delivery services. Some of that will subside in the wake of the, of the crisis, but not all of it. Uh, for one thing, you know, there's probably millions of more people who in the past month have figured out how to order food deliveries online. And once they've gotten over that hurdle, some of them will find they like it, some of them will continue, either for the sake of convenience or because there are lingering concerns about the health effects of going to a sit-down restaurant or going to a crowded grocery store. So the kind of shift towards online purchases coupled with uh, on-site delivery, that's going to be a massive shift that I don't think will turn around. Um, we're doing this interview via, via Zoom. I can tell you my calendar has filled up with Zoom meetings, as I'm sure many others have. So Zoom and other like-minded tech, like technologies are also experiencing a massive boom. All of us are learning how to work with this technology. There is a learning curve. It's not that steep, but you know, you got to work out the kinks, both personally and in terms of organizations. Once we've crossed that threshold, I think we'll do a lot more video conferencing going forward. Um, that's great for businesses like Zoom. Airline, what it does mean though is airline travel, for example, is pro and hotel occupancy for business reasons, maybe for tourism reasons. Reason, they're going to probably be down and soft even after we get over, the, um, over this crisis itself. So those are, those are just some examples. I think we've learned. Um, hopefully we've learned that uh, some of our investments in uh, public health infrastructure and uh, supply chains for uh, critical medical uh, care equipment, masks, ventilators, testing capacity, both the kits and the lab capacity, 
Uh, those are things that it looks like we probably want to up our investments in, not just in the near term, but over the longer term. So there's going to be many, many shifts uh, of this sort. And that raises um, kind of an interesting point for policy. We want policy to be conducted in a way that facilitates these shifts and encourages them rather than slowing them down and discouraging them.